What's up YouTube? It's Matt with that Jeep Adventure and today we finally have a free day um, and we're gonna get a little bit of work done on the 79 CJ5 project. Uh, so today we're gonna be working on getting uh, these hard lines replaced. Uh, I ordered a new pre-bent kit online so uh, I'm hoping everything matches up pretty good. Um, so we're gonna start with the brake lines and uh, I'm gonna get the gas tank skid put on today, probably get the fuel tank dropped in. Um, and I think that's gonna wrap it up. Oh, I'm the tie rod. I'm also gonna get the tie rod uh, put in today. So uh, let's get to work. First thing I'm gonna do is start sorting through this brake line kit and try to figure out what goes where. So uh, let's start matching things up. So I just took these brake lines out of the box and I started trying to match it up with the old ones. Look at this. Each line is marked. It tells you what it is on the line. So I wasn't expecting that. So that's that's pretty awesome right there. That's gonna make this a whole lot easier. So let's get to work now. All right, so this is how the brake lines were sitting in there. Um, so we're gonna get all the lines unhooked and uh, paint the plate that the proportionate valves attached to, maybe clean up the proportionate valve a little bit and then get it all put back together. Alright, so I got the proportioning valve all cleaned up. Uh, I made a stupid mistake and I broke off where the the wire here comes in. I broke off the clip. Um, I was trying to get the brake line free and when the when it did break free, it hit this and the plastic's just brittle from being old, so uh, it broke. Had to dig the threads out, but uh, it's good to go. Hopefully I can find this clip somewhere. I'm assuming that I can. Now we're gonna get the plate cleaned up and painted uh, so we can start putting it back together. All right, we got the brake lines kind of laid out where they're gonna go. It looks like all the bends and everything are really close to what the previous lines were, so it doesn't look like there's gonna be any main issues there. All right, so I had the front lines kind of already in place, but I realized that uh, it actually goes through the frame, so the brake line, the hard line will go through the frame here and out on this side to fit into the bracket. So uh, I'm about to pop these lines off so I can maneuver them through the frame and then hook them back to the proportioning valve after I get uh, it fed through the frame. So the rear has a soft line that kind of goes into the frame and connects right here, connects to the brake line, and then connects to the axle tube, and then it splits with more hard line that goes to each wheel. So uh, we're gonna get this mounted and get it hooked to our hard line right here in the frame. So I made a trip over to Osaika uh, to my parts buddy, uh, George, and I was able to find the parking brake indicator plug that uh, I broke off of the proportioning valve. So I was hoping that I could just buy one of these online, but uh, there was no way to get just this without ordering an entire new proportioning valve, and the whole proportioning valve is like $100, so this was definitely the cheaper option. We just got lucky that he had one sitting on an old frame um, outside of his shop so uh, you can see this is the old one and we we broke the threads off of it so all right these top two lines are where the master cylinder lines go but uh, I'm gonna leave these off until uh, we're further down the line on the project I don't want them sticking out and being in the way 
Um, and then right here in the middle is where our uh, plug goes in, our electrical connection. So uh, the way that I broke this, taking it off, was by loosening this and it kind of spun the wrench into that and I broke it. So I'm not going to make the same mistake twice, so I'm going to leave this off uh, as well until I've already got these lines attached and then I'll put this in last. All right, so next we are going to reuse our bump stops. Uh, the rubber on these is in pretty good shape. The bracket part is just kind of rusted, so uh, I'm going to clean these up and repaint them and get them on the frame. All right, we got our bump stops all repainted and they look pretty good. So we're gonna put them on the frame now and that'll pretty much finish up all the suspension. Before I roll this out of the shop, I want to uh, go ahead and redo the tie rod too, just to make it easier to steer uh, whenever I do finally push it out. So um, we're gonna hit this with the wire wheel, get it primered and painted, and then put new tie rod ends on. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is get our tie rod ends removed. Um, so we just gotta loosen this bolt that has it clamped down and then we'll unscrew this out the end. We can just throw these away since, uh, since we're gonna be replacing them. Uh, so I'm just gonna try to get the new one as close to this uh, same distance as I can. Uh, I mean, we'll have to do an alignment after everything is said and done, but this looks like it's got one, two, three, four, about five threads sticking out on this side and then on, uh, on this other side here, um, it's all the way in. So we're just gonna go off that for now. All right, well now this end, seems like it's gonna be tricky to get off. So I'm gonna let it soak in PB Blaster for a minute. Alright, so I finally got the ends out. Those things were rusted in there and uh, PB Blaster wasn't doing it by itself so we put the torch on it, heated it up and they finally came out. So now we are going to uh, hit this with the wire wheel, get it primed, repainted and get the new ends put in. All right, well next up is getting the ends put into our tie rod so we can get the front two tires connected to make it a little easier to push around the shop. Um, I think we're gonna go with like a 1 8 inch toe in, so uh, we'll set all that as we're, as we're putting the ends in and, and hooking it all together. All right, well now that we got it torqued, we can put our cotter pins in. We also need to put the Zerk fitting down here so we can grease it up. So there's two holes in the knuckle arm right here on the passenger side. Uh, the tie rod goes in the back and the drag link goes in the front. All right, so the skid has this little plastic sleeve that kind of sits in here uh, between the gas tank and the skid. I guess it's probably just to like keep it from rattling. Um, but anyway, you can see that the little plastic part here is broken. So I'm gonna drill it out, holes on either side, and just try to fix it with uh, like putting some zip ties in there, just kind of stitch it back together. So. All right. Well, now that that sits down in there, let's set our tank in. All right, now that the tank is mounted to the skid, we can drop it in. All right, up next is to get some shocks put on. I found these Pro Comp shocks online. They were on sale, so uh, it was a good time to pick these up. So let's get them put on. Uh, one more thing off the checklist.
All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, we got a lot of the little projects out of the way. Um, still have a bunch more to do. I've got the transmission torn down over at my buddy Rob's house. Uh, we had kind of a, a drinking day out there and had some friends come over and we all kind of worked on tearing it down. Um, so I've got the case here at my house that I'm going to get cleaned up so we can take it back over to Rob's shop one day. Um, and then we'll have another little get together and we'll get it all put back together. So um, that's coming on the way. Uh, Pretty much once that's done, uh, it's going to be time to pull the motor out of the 74 and get it into this frame. So I'm excited. We, uh, we're making progress. So uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow on Instagram at That Jeep Adventure.